Tonight, if you'll turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Just think, for 2,000 years, Christians have been getting together on the first day of the week to celebrate the Lord. That's a good tradition we're in. Amen. We're, we're following that tradition of celebrating the Lord. On Sunday nights, we've been talking about one anothering. And we're going to cover a new one tonight. Just got a real short verse, but if you would, please, let's go ahead and stand. I'll read the verse, and then we'll pray that God would speak to us tonight. Paul admonishes us. He says, wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Sometimes preachers do that. When they preach on things, they're not saying, church, you're not doing this. You need to get busy. They're encouraging you to advance in that, continue in that. And just want to make some notes before we get started here. First of all, the word comfort doesn't just mean to pat on the back. It, it has the wider meaning of encouraging, encouraging one another. And then the word edify, it goes with that. Edify literally comes from the word to build a house. So when you edify somebody, you're building them up. You're building them up. So let's take the word comfort, this comfort yourselves together. There's the one another together. This literally means encourage one another. So we're going to talk tonight about encouraging one another. Isn't that encouraging? Thank you. Pray with me for me tonight that God would speak to us. Father, thank you for your people. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness. Lord, you're the one that came. You're the one that suffered. You're the one that bled. And you're the one that died and gave your life for us. You're the one that rose again. And oh, how we've benefited from that, Lord. Thank you for your goodness to us and your mercy. And Lord, I pray tonight that you would anoint me to speak your words in a way that will challenge us and change us and encourage us. Lord, that we would be the people you'd have us be. And Lord, in these last days, that all that enter would find that here God ministers to them through his people, and that they are helped and strengthened and encouraged. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated tonight. <coughs> I want to share a study with you. Could I do that? Listen to this. It's real short. But recent research and studies, recent research and studies have shown that there's a 99% chance 99% chance that somebody within 10 feet of you needs encouraged. No, that's not true. I made that up. There's no study that showed that. But I believe it's true. I believe I can say with assurance tonight that 99% chance that somebody within 10 feet of you needs discouraged. Needs discourage. <laughs> Let me take this drink of water. This is bothering me, okay? There's a 99% chance that someone within 10 feet of you tonight really seriously needs encouraged. They need it. Did you know if you'll talk to most people that serve God any amount of time, they will have a story how they felt like quitting but somebody came along and encouraged them. Think about that. Anyone that served God any length of time will have a testimony how they were at that point of feeling like they had to quit, they had to give up, but somebody came along and encouraged them. What does encourage mean? It literally means the end means in. Encourage means to put courage to put courage into someone. Discourage, dis means out. Discourage means to take courage out of them. And what's courage? Courage is the ability or strength to do something that is dangerous and difficult. So when you encourage somebody, you put strength in them to give them the ability to do what is difficult in their lives. They have found their lives difficult. You encourage them. Now they're able to face that thing. And so let's look at this. Let's put this together. If you looked it up in a dictionary, encourage means to cause someone to be more hopeful, to cause them to be more determined, to cause them to be more assured. 
If you would look at the Greek word, to encourage means to inspire someone, to bring them comfort, and we'll get to this later, but the word uh, encourage also means to exhort, to exhort someone. So let's put this all together, and here it is on the wall. When you encourage someone, you say something that inspires them, gives them determination, gives them confidence, gives them hope, or gives them comfort. Amen. What a wonderful thing that you're able to say something to someone. And the word say is involved in that, exhorting. If you're able to say something that would make that change in somebody. Did you know before you, could, before you leave this place tonight, you could encourage someone. You could literally say something to them that would be put determination in their soul, that would inspire their faith, that would give them a confidence, maybe comfort them, and give them hope. Amen. Let me just put it, because I'm going to end here. When you encourage, when you encourage somebody... You're simply saying to them, I notice. I notice you. I notice what you're going through. I notice what you're facing. Amen. When you encourage, you tell people it's not like the enemy's trying to tell them. They're not what the enemy trying to tell them they are. Because when you encourage somebody, you're saying, I care and I notice. You know, a lot of difficulty is eased when we just know that people care and people notice. So let's look at this tonight. Why encourage? I don't want to insult anyone's intelligence, but why encourage? Because people need it. People need a lot of encouragement. People aren't babies. There's just a lot to face. There's a young mother who feels overwhelmed. There's a dad that's worrying about his job. There's a senior saint that feels lonely. There's a teenager who's being made fun of at school. There's someone who's failed miserably this past week and feel like it's hopeless to try again. There's somebody struggling with an awful temptation and feel lo- and feels locked into that. Somebody's gotten bad medical news. Somebody's struggling with their schoolwork. Somebody is having marital problems or familial problems. And so we need to encourage simply because people need it. I believe as Mark Twain says, said that he could live a month off one good compliment. I want to tell you, we can live, we can go on by encouragement. How many knows that the people who get the least encouragement are the most faithful people? I want you to think about that. In the church, especially, the people who get encouraged the least are the most faithful people, the people that do the most, the people that live godly the most, the people who serve the most are the ones who are least encouraged. There's a reason for that. You probably already guessed the reason. But let me expand that a little bit. It's not just true in the church. It's true the parents that are doing their utmost are the parents that get the least encouraged. Those that are in school, some of you students, you that are doing the best, you get the least encouraged. Come on, someone help me tonight. You know I'm telling you the truth. Those that are faithful, those that are fulfilling the responsibility, those that are doing what they need to do, those that are ministering the best, they get the least encouragement. Here's why. The troublemakers always get the most attention. The misbehaved in school, they always get the most in- attention. Amen. The faithful, they re- the responsible, they get little attention. It's, it's this adage, the crying baby's the one that gets the milk. Right? The squeaky wheel gets the grease. And so, what, what are you trying to, why did you mention that? Because sometimes... Those that are in their place in the church, they teach their Sunday school class every Sunday. Those that minister, they minister uh, in, in music or in worship or they minister in outreach. We don't think to encourage them because they're always there. They're always doing it. They're always a step up to the plate. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. And everyone looks straight at me. There's someone in this house, I know this personally, that's in desperate need of encouragement they are so overwhelmed so facing it but nobody thinks of encouraging him because they're always have been so strong they've always been so 
faithful. They've always been in their place, doing their thing, serving the Lord. So no one thinks they need encouragement. But I'm telling you, they're in desperate need of encouragement tonight. It's the people that's doing the best job. Some, some of you, you children, you never think of because your parents are doing their job. You never think to encourage them for parenting the way they are. You see, it's the faithful people that cause the church to be the church, who do the work of the church, without whom the church would not survive. And so encouraging those people helps everybody. Encouragement of the faithful people is like maintenance to your car. It's like good food to your body. Amen. Don't wait until your car engine blows up. Faithfully check your oil. Faithfully have it changed. And encouraging the faithful of the church is like maintenance to a car. Yes, it's for their good first and foremost. But when you encourage the faithful, it's for the well-being of the church. So ultimately, everyone benefits so why are you talking about so much about encouragement within the context of the church, this one another in encouragement? Because I want to tell you something. In the church right now, right as I speak, we, the church, we need encouragement not to compromise. Never before has there been a pressure to compromise than right now. And I'm not just talking about our church with our conservative Pentecostal roots, I'm talking about across the board, evangelical Christians that preach born again. I can mention any denomination. The pressure is on to compromise. I've heard people on the radio that are not of the same uh, uh, theological persuasion, and even they say, uh, see it. Name main speakers are saying that they have never seen a time, not just people, but when whole churches and, and, and religious leaders of our nation are compromising the truth. We're not talking about haggling over non-essential truth. We're talking about compromising the cardinal, orthodox, foundational, essential truths of Christianity. We're coming to the point you'll hardly ever hear even preaching about being born again or conversion. It's not about born again or conversion anymore. It, it's about feel good. The pressure is not only on the church but on Christians to compromise on the minister. You know, as Paul would say, I speak as a fool. I mean, I'm not saying personally, but I want to tell you, ministers of our country are under tremendous pressure to compromise. And so they stand for the truth. And, and instead of being encouraged for standing for the truth, people come with criticisms that further discourage them to compromise. We need encouragement. Amen. You know, here's the thing about compromise. It always begins with small things and then it becomes an avalanche. Amen. Let me tell you, Paul has some very good instruction in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 to Timothy. He says, Timothy, my son in the faith, continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned him. Why did Paul tell Timothy, the young man, that? Because Timothy was under the pressure to compromise. So Paul says, don't compromise. Continue in those things that you've known. Why does the New Testament say over and over, hold fast to your faith? Why does it say, neglect not your salvation? Why does Jude say, earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints? Because the pressure is on. But I want to tell you what will take the pressure off in a big, big way. And that is to be encouraged. Stand for the truth. Young person, you're doing the right thing. You're living the right faith. You're, you're serving the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, some children go to their parents after service and say, thank you, Mom and Dad, for, for, for being concerned that I, I know the truth about Jesus and about God and about the Word of God. So we need encouragement not to compromise. We need encouragement to bring out the best in one another. Did you know when we encourage one another, we bring out the best in each other? This is where that exhort comes in. Remember I told you that when Paul says comfort, it has the idea of exhorting one another. You say, well, what's an exhortation? It, it's, I'm not, I was thinking about how far to go here. 
But the word goes clear back to a grammatical use. A hortation, a hortation is when you say of a group, including yourself, we need to do this. And it begins like this, let us. That's an exhortation. When you come out with the hortation, it's an exhortation. So it's not just me saying, listen, you need to do this. And you need to do that. And you need to do that. But an exhortation is kind of like putting arms around one another and say, let us do this. See, that's the way you encourage. You don't ever get up on a high place and say, let me tell you how you need to do things. That's not the way we encourage one another. We encourage one another by saying we're all on the same leveled plane. Let us do. How many's ever read the book of Hebrews? Have you noticed the let us? Let us hold fast. Let us go on. Let us enter in. Let us. So this word of encouraging has the ideal of exhortation. Amen. And so let me let me just make up some scenarios. Even this might be amongst the youth. Here's an exhortation. I know we were going to go see that movie, but let us not go and see it. I've seen the reviews. It's got preventity and nudity in it, and it would not be good for our Christian walk. Let us not go watch it. Not, I can't believe you go watch such a but let us not go watch it. Here's another one. Let us quit running down a Sunday school teacher, a music leader, amen, the youth pastors. Let us quit running down our leaders, and let us pray for them, and let us get in and worship with them. Let us quit insulting one another and criticizing. Let us get more involved. Let us go to outreach this week. Let us spend more time in prayer. Let us come to church with our hearts already prepared. Amen. Let us make a stand like Daniel in the three. Let us make a stand that we will not be defiled by the king's meat. And when everybody else shoulders themselves up to the table and partakes of that which is profane. Let us make a stand even if they threaten us with the fiery furnace. Let us just stand. And having done all, let us stand. Let us. That's the kind of encouragement we need. So we, we, we need to encourage because people need encourage and even in the church. But listen to me, please. We need to encourage you need to encourage, I need to encourage you, because you really can. Listen to me. You really can be an encouragement. Don't, don't, don't push this off on somebody else and say they'd be good at that. I want to tell you, every one of you here that's a believer knows Jesus Christ, you can encourage people. It's unbelievable what a difference you can make in somebody's life. You say, how could you have such a confidence that we can encourage one another? Because we know the love of God. And we can share the love of God. That encourages. We, we can encourage one another because we got the truth of Scripture. We don't have to come up with our own witticism. Amen. We can just share with one another what the book says. We can encourage one another. Amen. Because we have the help of the Holy Spirit. Listen, if, if, you're, if you're set on encouraging somebody, the Holy Spirit's going to get involved in that. He'll give you the words. He'll, he'll, he'll give you the way to come alongside. In, in, in fact, I've been amazed that even this word for comfort and encouraging is the same word that is used for the Holy Spirit when he's called the comforter, the comforter called alongside one. Did you know when you're encouraging, you're being like the Holy Spirit. He's the one that comes along and encourages one another. How can we encourage one another? Amen. Because we have the reality of heaven to remind one another about. Oh, hallelujah. I said we got the reality of heaven to remind somebody about. That's why there's encouragement at the bedside of somebody dying of cancer. We can be an encouragement because there's heaven. Amen. We can be an encouragement to because our very presence, if we don't even say one thing as a child and representative of God, our very presence can be a reminder of the presence of God and the nearness of God. Encourage one another. We encourage one another because people need it. We encourage one another because you and I really can. But we encourage one another, let me just put it this way, because you will need it yourself. 
if I have found anything true in living the life up to this point, been quite a few years, I have found true the axiom for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen. You see somebody, a resident of a nursing facility, and no family and nobody ever wants to go see them, attend to them, pay attention to them. Not, uh, there's exceptions to the rule because of other intervening situations. But I'm going to tell you, on most accounts, the reason nobody's going to see them is because they never went to see anybody. The reason people forget about them because they forgot. If there's anything that's true, it's this thing about sowing and reaping. Did you know if you'll sow encouragement, you're going to reap encouragement? Because there's going to be a day when you need encouragement. I've learned that from my own experience. I don't want to be too vulnerable here, but we can feel pretty sufficient sometimes in ourselves. I can handle this. I can handle life. I can do this. Other people that need encouragement, they're weak. You know, they're doing something wrong. I want to tell you, don't get that attitude because life has a way of bringing you to a place. I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how much you know. Life has a way of bringing you to the place that you will need encouragement. Amen. If you'll be an encourager, encouragement will come to you. Amen. What you sow, you reap. I need it. You need it. Every person will come to that point. It isn't just the world that we live in, the reason why we need encouragement. It's the aspirations we have as a Christian that makes us need encouragement. Why? Because we as Christians, we want to grow. We want to be all that God would have us be. We want to serve Christ. That takes encouragement. Let's move quickly on. I'm really about done, but when do we encourage? In the context of our scripture, we encourage one another to help one another continue in the faith. We encourage one another to encourage each other to continue to live for God, to continue to hold on to what we believe, to continue to move forward and to advance. When do we need encouragement? When we begin to lose our passion and enthusiasm for the things of God. We need encouragement when we begin to stumble on our way. We need encouragement when we're involved in a life struggle. We need encouragement when we face loss and we face disappointment. We need encouragement when we're tired and we're weary in life and serving God. And it's that last one that I want to emphasize. Amen. Why in the world did Paul say, let us, there it is again, let us not be weary in well doing. Why did Paul say that? Why was he trying to encourage those? It's very simple. We do get weary in well doing. We do get weary in serving God. We do get weary in this life of, of a Christian. Amen. We need that encouragement when we find it hard to go on. We need that encouragement when we feel like quitting. We need that encouragement when we're weary with the walk. We need that encouragement when they're in the heat of the battle. We're just tired, tired to the bone. Amen. We need that encouragement because of the grind and the atmosphere of our jobs in the secular workplace. Amen. We need encouragement because the pressures of our studies and the atmosphere of school. We need encouragement because just the struggles of living and making ends meet. We need that encouragement because of the constant societal challenges to our faith. We need that encouragement because we fight spiritual battles. It goes beyond the physical. Amen. Even the financial. There is that spiritual battle. We need encouragement so we can be faithful to ministry, faithful to service, faithful to worship. We need that encouragement so we can share the gospel and see somebody come to Christ. That's when we need that encouragement. All right, well, how to be an encourager. I'm going to make this very brief and simple. But I have discovered as I prepared, if I want to encourage then I need to learn what makes somebody an encourager. If I'm going to encourage, what makes somebody an encourager? And it's really quite simple. Here's the way it works. Whatever our temperaments, whatever, here's how it works. When we turn inward in ourselves, we become miserable. We become 
full of negative outlook. We become full of criticism when we turn inward and look at our own self and our own problems and our own emotions. When we look inwardly, we just become miserable, critical folks that forget other people have struggles, other people have battles. And so we cannot be an encourager. How does someone become an encourager? They make the decision with the help of God, I'm not going to look inwardly. I'm going to look outwardly. I'm not going to look inwardly to my problem. I'm going to look outwardly to other people's problems. And when you begin to look outwardly, the Holy Spirit will help you. But you begin to realize that you can make a difference in that person's life. Being there for for them. Saying what needs to be said. I turn inward. I'm discouraged. I look outward. I can be an encourager. So here it is. The best way. How many knows this? The best way to overcome unthankfulness is to outwardly express thankfulness. The best way to overcome selfishness, which we all tend to, the best way to overcome selfishness is to serve someone else. And the best way to be encouraged ourselves is to be an encourager to someone else. I want to tell you, encouragement is as infectious as the common cold. I promise you it'll work this way if you have even half a heart. If somehow after service I'm able to really encourage Brother Casada, I have a feeling he won't get out the door before he'll feel like encouraging somebody else. It's infectious. Amen. Encourage one another. Exhort one another. Comfort one another. So first, if you want to encourage, set your heart to become an encourager. Second, look for opportunities to encourage. When you turn your gaze outwardly, you'll see the opportunities. They're everywhere. You may be middle age, but you'll notice a young person that needs to be encouraged. Or you might be a young person, but you'll notice a grandpa or a grandma that needs to be encouraged. You'll see the opportunities. If you pay attention to other people, you'll discover countless opportunities to encourage them. Real briefly, in parentheses, if you're going to encourage, you can't be negative. It's an oxymoron. Amen. You can't be negative with the person and encourage the person. Don't attack them. Encourage. Don't put them on the defensive. Amen. Build them up, as Paul said. Don't speak harshly. Speak encouragingly. Don't criticize. Speak good things to them and about them and about their faith. Well, where to begin? This is it tonight. Where to begin? We're through after this. Begin with those with whom you worship God. That's where you need to start encouraging. Encourage your fellow believers. Encourage those that are faithful ministers in the church. Faithful ministers in the church. Amen. You know, some have sat, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm trying to encourage. I'm not trying to be negative. But some have sat and a Sunday school teacher's room for 20 years and never once said, I appreciate the preparation you put into that lesson. Think about that. There's been young people, Brother Brian, that's worked, been all through the youth group from the time that it was legal <laughs> till they left, and not once did they say, thank you for driving us to all the youth camps. Thank you for the job that you do. And I, 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 only thing I'm trying to say, I'm not trying to help Brother Brian tonight on that. I'm trying to help all of us. It's when we encourage the others that something happens in our own heart and something happens in the body, in the church of the living God. I want to ask you one thing. I'm just going to slip it right in here. How many has ever had God encourage you? Isn't that a wonderful thing? Amen. So when we encourage, we're like God. We're to begin with those you serve. Encourage the faithful ministers. Encourage the examples in the church. Encourage your friends in the church. My, my, my. I don't know what happens. I'd have to ask Brother Brian. But sometimes young people can pick on one another. One of them tries to sing. The rest laugh at them. What what if we just pushed all that aside 
and encouraged them, encouraged them to pray, encouraged them to sing, encouraged them at their testimony at the, at the nursing home. You see, it's in the context of friendship that encouragement is best given and best received. Encourage your fellow believers. Encourage your friends. Encourage your family. Families need encourage. I know your young dad's just dad. That's just his job. Mom's just mom. That's just her job. You wouldn't believe the difference in your mom's life if you just encourage her. Mom, you're doing a great job. What about it? What if you encourage your spouse? Say something encouraging to them. Amen. Amen. So begin there. And then expand to those you spend your day with. We spend our day with a lot of people that we're not close to. Co-workers, students. But after you've encouraged people around you, then you'll become an encourager to those that fill your day. Let me tell you what will happen. Amen. It'll be a co-worker. You'll see an opportunity to encourage. It'll be a fellow student. You'll see an opportunity to encourage. And that brings me to the last thing. Then you can expand to opportunities outside your usual circles. You're walking through the neighborhood, and you see a gentleman that sits on his porch every day. Don't know him, just passing by, but all of a sudden, you'll feel a need to encourage him. You'll see a young child. You may be an older person. You'll see a child playing in your neighborhood. You've never talked to him before, but you sense a need to be an encourager. God will open up opportunities that will expand. Would you come, music? I haven't really been reading a book on the homeless. I shared an illustration this morning about the homeless. And then I came across this this afternoon. But a preacher said that he was in a rush and he always drove to this certain part of town where there's always several homeless people holding their signs and asking for money. And he said one of them was walking up to the cars as they were waiting on the light to change and holding his sign up in the... uh, window and doing what I must confess I do just ignore him but the preacher said he rolled down his window and he said to the man he said listen I do not have any cash right now but my wife has got to take me to the to the airport an hour and a half if you're still here we'll come by here and I'll have money for you then and he said that man said through the window he never said thank you for your offering of money he said I want to thank you that you actually looked at me. He said again, thank you that you looked at me. That meant more to that man than the money. Let me tell you what you do. I started here and I'm ending here. When you encourage somebody, you know what you said to them? I see you. I'm looking at you. Amen. Because a lot of people, their problem and their struggle, they feel like nobody sees them. But when you encourage I want you to do something. We're going to go ahead and come to the altar in a moment. But I want you to come and pray tonight. It may not happen before you leave. It very well could. But I want you, if you would, I want you to pray that God would give you an opportunity to encourage somebody. And pray that even he would help you do that before you left God's house tonight. Okay. Let me say it one more time. Encourage one another. Could you stand? Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your people. Thank you, Lord, that you've encouraged us even tonight. Thank you for the encouragement of the choir song, encouragement of the special singing, encouragement of the comments that were made, encouragement of just seeing our brothers and sisters here. Thank you for the encouragement we felt when we sang about your faithfulness and we're reminded, Lord, that truly you are faithful. You're faithful to us. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for the encouragement that we feel just from one another's presence. These are brothers and sisters that, that, that love one another. Thank you, Jesus, for the times you've encouraged us in the night when we couldn't sleep. You've encouraged us in the morning when we were so tired we could hardly dry, drive to work. just seemed like another mundane, hard day. You encouraged us in the car. Lord, thank you for your encouragement. You're an encouraging God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. If that's your desire tonight, if you want to be an encourager, encourage one another. Amen. Believe me, you can. Believe me, you can be an encourager. Would you come and pray tonight and say, Lord, I want to be an encourager. Amen. And pray about encouraging somebody. Could you do that? Don't let your age stop you. 
Amen. Don't, don't, don't let what you do or don't do stop you. Just say, Lord, I want to be an encourager. I want to be an encourager. I want to encourage. Look outward, not inward. Hear me tonight. Look outward, not inward. Whom can I encourage? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to encourage you tonight. Appreciate the way you come pray, service after service. I want to encourage you. You're doing the right thing the way you fill these altars and seek the Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, we seek you tonight. We seek you tonight, Lord. Oh, turn outward. Somebody needs encouragement. Together. Yes, Lord.